let's play some hockey. Stars, Blues, Game 3, Series tied at 1. Well, Blues wins. Have been nail-biting finishes. History, Jeff. Okay, your game will be the opening game of the Nat Stadium. Clearly, the Wizards are not the same team that they were in the beginning of this season. They are definitely a force to be reckoned with. You could see the defending champions here tonight playing a back and forth game all night long. And they say that basically he influenced, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali. And he said, listen, would you? A second, but I just, wish, I just wish that you could elaborate a little bit more about what it felt like to go through that elimination game. And given that opportunity this year, how would you guys do it differently? If you both could answer the question, I'd appreciate it. Well, Differently is coming into this season without having knee surgeries and everybody being healthy. That's the key for our team. Hurt, 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 hurt. He left 93 seconds into the first quarter. He collided with a teammate and hurt his left knee. Don't know what's going to happen for the, for the future with the playoffs. But anyway, uh, Kevin Durant it never returned back to the game. Hey everybody, I'm Alina Neves, courtside at Capital One Arena where the Washington Wizards, who are nine... Hey, everybody, welcome to The Hustle. I'm your girl, Alina Seven, where, you know, where we talk about everything from the work that goes into it, uh, the hustle, the grind, the effort, um, all of the above. Uh, and then we talk about the results as well. So I'm so excited uh, to be here. Obviously, last week, what can I say? I wasn't here. And that's part of the uh, whole thing that I want to talk about because there's an, a definite reason as to why I was not here uh, for two reasons, right? Uh, most people know that I have twins and they play sports uh, at a very high level. So um, I was gone, actually. So, A, I want to give a shout out to Lawrence Downs for hosting my show. Thank you so much, Lawrence. You did a great job. Um, and thank you for holding it down for me last week. But I also want to give a shout out. And Igor, if you could just put my kids' pictures, they're probably going to get me for this. But what can I say? I had to kind of show them off. Um, last week, I was in Atlanta because my son who plays for Morehouse Tennis, had his conference finals. And I was so excited for him. He got player of the week and all this stuff this, uh, this season. So I was uh, so delighted, so excited to see him and go down and watch him play his finals. Um, and then I also got to see my daughter finish out her ACC uh, for uh, tennis, women's tennis. She plays for the ACC right there for, uh, for NC State. So it was exciting for me to watch them. She finished out playing against Georgia Tech, which she won. Um, they didn't do so well in the ACC this past week in North Carolina, where I was as well. So I was on a bit of a tour. But I do want to give a shout out to both my son and my daughter just to congratulate them on such a winning season, um, but also to say to my daughter that I was so proud of her. She got um, nominated for Rookie of the Year, okay? Rookie of the Year at NC State last night. She was going up against um, a leading basketball player from NC State as well as you can see she was going up against a swimmer a swimmer as well uh, for Rookie of the Year. She did not win the Basketball Star one. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, we were so proud and so excited for her just to be nominated for the ACC Rookie of the Year. That's such a major accomplishment for her in her own right. So, hey, it's all about you know getting your kids playing sports. I had no idea that my kids would excel so much um, I knew that we had some sort of athletic gene. I didn't know whether it would have come through me as well, but hey, nonetheless, I'm excited and um, so proud that she got uh, nominated for Rookie of the Year. Did not win, but uh, 
won just to be nominated, and that's exceptional. So I am so proud of her, so excited for her uh, to have been uh, nominated for Rookie of the Year. So congratulations to Miss Alana. So <laughs> anyway, it's been such a whirlwind. I mean, these two kids were like freshmen, okay? They are freshmen going into college, and my daughter was coming off the pro tour and we had decided that it was probably best for her to go to college because, you know, I told her, hey, if you're not number one and you don't have a sponsorship from Nike, you got to go to college. And, you know, in tennis, I'm not sure if you know this, but you can play pro even while you're in college. Uh, and so that's what we, we said, hey, just go to college and you can continue to play pro. And that's what she does but she does have collegiate responsibilities as a tennis player as well. So she was coming off the tour and going to college, and I wasn't sure if she was gonna make that, how well she was gonna make that transition. And obviously my son was coming from Bishop McNamara in Forestville, Maryland. So I am so proud of them. I'm so excited. Can you hear it in my voice? I'm just so proud of them um, and just to, um, you know, and I haven't even talked to my daughter completely yet, but I'm going to post a bunch of stuff today. So anybody that follows me is going to see her pictures and her nomination. And of course, I'm a little perturbed with her because she posted an actual video of them going through the nominations and then announcing her name as well. And of course, she doesn't send me the video. So anyway, go figure. That's how kids are. So I've been like, give me the video. <laughs> Give me the video so I can post. Um, and so I will be posting that. So those who are my followers at Alina7 on Facebook, Twitter, everywhere, you will see um, the video of her actually being nominated. Um, so, so proud of her, of uh, both of my kids. Uh, so anyway, so I'm back here. You know, if I left my show, it's only because <laughs> It's something regarding my kids, because I typically would not leave my show. So you knew that it had to have been something really big. And I really want to thank Lawrence for holding my show down. I know it's a lot for someone to come in and do my show week after week um, and to be, you know, it's like a running monologue for me. But when people come into your house, it's like all of a sudden you have to make them comfortable in your house and you're not there. So it's a little bit sometimes challenging for them, even though Lawrence is here a couple times a month. It's still challenging, so I just want to give him a shout out and thank him very much for holding down my show. I really appreciate it. Um, so, <laughs> and a lot of people were talking about it and was like, where were you, where were you? So I just wanted to tell everybody that I was basically on like a little tour with my kids. So I've been to Atlanta, North Carolina, so, and um, my daughter played the ACC at UNC last week in Chapel Hill, so I got to see that and take a little tour and all of that stuff. So, it was very interesting to be at UNC as well, so mm, you got to do that too. Go and check out. And on top of that, it was a tornado, so we had to literally go to the basement of the building in the middle of my daughter's matches. They stopped it because it was a tornado that came through North Carolina. And we had to last, I don't know if you guys, <laughs> last Friday there was really bad storms that came through North Carolina. So we had to go into the basement because the top part of the building is made of like aluminum. So we couldn't even be at the top of the, um, at the top where the matches were taking place, we had to go down to the basement for about a good hour, and then that's when we got to, uh, after that hour went by, we came back and we got to see uh, her play, and she won doubles, didn't do so well in singles, but anyway, but nonetheless, we are proud of her and proud of her as well as my son's accomplishments and I couldn't be prouder. So anyway, so I'm back in the flesh. I'm right here um, and excited about what's going on on my show today, okay? So let me just tell you, I have some really good people that are on my show, okay? I, I, I get guests all the time, and I love all my guests. 
Um, but it's always kind of refreshing to get somebody who kind of works in your field and who is doing it on such a great level and a grand level. Um, and so, and I always like to get their perspective. So I can't wait in about another minute or so when we take a break, we're going to come back with a uh, Glenn concert. And if you guys are familiar, if you've been watching and paying attention to the Washington wizards, then you should know that name. You should really know that name because if you've ever had to listen to the Washington Wizards broadcast in your car, then you are listening to Glenn Concert because you can only hear him on the uh, Washington Wizards uh, radio channel. So um, he's a very, very familiar voice. He's a very familiar face. He's been in sports probably all of his life. Um, but I can't wait to like talk with him about what it was like in the beginning of his own basketball career because as I was reading about him, it says that he played point guard all four years at BU for Rick Pitino. Mm, we know who that is. Um, and <laughs> for those of us who follow you know, college basketball, we know who Rick Pitino is. Um, and then he also played in Europe. So there, that leads me to believe that at some point he had a real strong desire to, if not play in the NBA, to play basketball professionally uh, because he actually did it overseas. So I'm going to talk with him about that. And then we're going to get, we're just going to like test him out a little bit and, you know, see if he'll give us some information about the Washington Wizards because, you know, I know some things, but I want to pick his brain. And I want to hear just what he's got to say <laughs> about this season. Wrap it up. Tell me what he thinks about it and all of that stuff, and then what we can look forward to in the future. Who's going to stay? Who's going to go? Because we know that the Washington Wizards are going to have some major shakeups, and Ted Leonsis, to me, is not playing this year. He is not playing, from my perspective. I mean, when he lets go somebody who's been with them for 16 years, that lets me know he, and he gave it a good run with him, with uh, Ernie Grunfeld, and you know he did. Um, because and 16 years, that's like somebody who's part of your family. So you know it must have been very difficult uh, to have made that move and made that decision. But you know, I guess it's part of the business as an owner. You have to sometimes uh, fire your friends, uh, even if you've become bonded with them. And I'm sure that's probably what that situation was like. But anyway, we're gonna get all of that. So look, I'm gonna take a break, and when I come back, I'm gonna have Glenn. On the phone, we're going to be talking with him and all of that stuff. So give me uh, maybe like about a minute or so. And we're going to get Glenn and we're going to come back and talk with Glenn Conser. Coming up, Emmy Award winning Glenn Conser. Yes, color analyst for the Washington Wizards. And then after him, we got another biggie. We got Coach Keith Williams. He is Boogie Cousins. You guys know who Boogie Cousins from the Golden State Warriors, who just tore his left quad reset muscle. Thank God it wasn't a tendon in his quadricep. It's just a muscle. A lot of people don't know that muscles heal much quicker than tendons. So Boogie will probably be back, not this season, but he'll be back playing. It won't, it's, not as, it's not as severe as the, um, as the ACL, I mean, as the Achilles tendon. So um, anyway, so when we come back from the break, we'll have Glenn Concert. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back with the hustle. Five, take on the Miami Heat, who are six and eight. Now, as you know, the Washington Wizards beat the Heat in Miami. So tonight's going to definitely be a revenge for the Miami Heat. And the big score tonight was Bradley Beal with 24 points and eight assists, as well as Otto Porter. Well, he had 23 points. He was just extraordinary tonight. Very clutch. And Thomas Sadoransky, so who's in for John Wall, he's still out dealing with his knee. Well, he had 10 assists. He is definitely stepping up as their uh, starting point guard. Anyway, a great win. Talk to Scott Brooks. He said tonight the game plan was just basically to step up defensively and to make the 76ers make mistakes. And that's exactly what the Washington Wizards did tonight. A great game and a much needed win for them, especially in this series. They tie it up to a piece now with the 76ers. Important game as they approach playoffs and playoff seeding. Washington goes down to Cleveland in their first game against 
against the NBA champions at home, 95 to 104. John Wall finished up with 20. Yes, back to the hustle with your girl, Alina Seven, yes, and Glenn Consor, who is, we're just having a little technical difficulty, so we're just trying to bring him in. Glenn, are you there? Glenn? Hello? Yes, Glenn, can you, is, we just, yeah, now you can hear me. Okay, hold on, hold on, Glenn. We're just trying to, I think it might be one of our, uh, wires we're actually live so hey this is live <laughs> this is live so we have to expect anything anything and everything can happen so um igor who is my engineer on the show is uh trying to um correct the problem hold on for one minute glenn um well, I can hear you now, but, but it, it, it wasn't a it was, oh, okay, it wasn't a good connection. Okay, hold on, we're just gonna switch a wire on you, so hold on. We're just switching a wire. Igor may have a better one than, than what I brought. Um, can we hear him now? Oh, that's much better. All right, Igor, you are the genius. Glenn. Uh, I'm here. Oh, wow, oh, that's exciting, now we got him. Okay, now I feel better. <laughs> Glenn, it's so nice to have you on the show. Thank you. Nice for, to be here. Thank you so much for doing my show. I really appreciate that. I know I know you're a busy man, so you know I just appreciate the fact that you would take time out of your busyness to come and uh, be on my show and to talk about all the stuff that we want to talk about, which is really we want to kind of talk to you, Glenn, about your hustle in the beginning of your career. Then we'll get into the Wizards because we got, you know, we got a lot to talk about regarding the Wizards. But I just want to make sure that people get a real feel for who you are and what your background is because until I started to read, I really didn't know your background. And then also on top of that, then my sister goes, I know Glenn Consor. And then my sis, my nephew was like, oh, we played basketball with his son. And <laughs> then I started learning right. all about you even more, Glenn. So <laughs> Right, right. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so um, just take us back, Glenn, to those days. You know, you're from Flushing, New York, but just take us back to, you know, what your career was like back in the day and what your hustle was like, even the Rick Pitino days. Well, you know, as you mentioned, I grew up in Flushing, Queens, uh, which was an, really an amazing place to grow up. I mean, it was... Um, you know, an urban environment where, you know, there was, I grew up in an apartment, in an apartment building, a uh, small apartment, no air conditioning. I mean, the, there was no central air, all air conditioning units, fire escapes. Um, there were like, I don't know, 300 units in our apartment building. Oh, wow. 300 units. Friends all around. Um, and quite frankly, my biggest concern was um, if I went to uh, 214 schoolyard, would I miss the better runs at 32 schoolyard? So, you know, there were guys playing ball all the time. And I had, you know, really, you know, it was way different back then where there wasn't that many AA, it wasn't AAU. Um, so you learned and had to play really from the older guys in the schoolyard. And, you know, if you got burned, if you got, um, if you turn the ball over, you heard it, you heard about it from right. the older guys. And, and that's how really I, you know, I learned and, um, you know, I was kind of a late bloomer in high school. I wasn't recruited till my senior year. Okay. And, um, I thought I was going to go to Queens college where my sister went, okay. um, which was a community school, um, not a community college, but a local college. Okay. Um, like Brooklyn College, and um, next thing I knew, I was being recruited, and everything changed. Wow, wow! So you did you have any des real strong desire though to ever play it professionally? Well, I did play it professionally um, overseas for a number of years. I played in Israel, right. which was an amazing, amazing experience, and um, always good to get paid to play. Right, um, and it was. <laughs> 
it was it was a phenomenal experience for me and um you know just to get a chance to travel around Europe and play in Israel and see different countries and i had a, i had a tryout uh for an NBA team which at the time was the bullets and got cut and then i went back overseas and played again oh wow okay 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 and so when you got cut though what were you thinking then because I often wonder what do guys think about when they're released, you know? You know, it, 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 times were different then. Um, you know, there was no internet. And, you know, I really wanted to play in the NBA and I wasn't good enough. And um, I probably should have stuck it out, maybe played a couple more years and then tried out later on, which a lot of guys did. And Nate and a lot of guys like that did stick. Right. So, um but there was no internet and I was living in the Middle East and you couldn't even call home and you, oh. it was, in, you felt incredibly isolated. isolated. Um, yes. You know, phone calls were hard to make even back home. So I kind of gave up, you know, that's one of the, one of the regrets I have is I kind of gave up playing really, really at a young age. And when I probably could have played another five, six, seven, eight more years. Wow. You know, that's really compelling because it's true. The Internet, to a certain extent, has given, I think, everyone an opportunity in ways that we never thought that it could simply because you see so much stuff that you really would not see if, if we didn't have the Internet. I mean, we just see people doing things at different ages, different. I mean, it's just like open up a whole new world of like a new normal for us. Right. No question. And, um, I think if I would have been able to, you know, Skype with my friends and Skype with, um, my former coaches, I probably would have stuck around a lot longer, but wasn't the case. And, uh, you know, but either way things worked out for me. Right. Right. Well, Hey, look what you've done in, in, in the meantime and in between time, we're not complaining. <laughs> no, right? I'm not complaining. No, no, not at all. Because, you know, let me tell you, there are times when I'm in my car and I can't get to the game or I have somewhere to go. And I and and I listen to your broadcast um, and I've been meaning to tell you this. But, you know, sometimes in that environment, we just don't get the opportunity to do that. And a lot of times you're still broadcasting when I'm there at the um, at Capital One Arena. But I do listen to you a lot. And it's very I mean, I find you to be very compelling on the air because I can always follow exactly what's going on and you always give a very, very detailed report and elaborate on a lot of, a lot of information that if you're not there, like I know some of the stuff you're talking about because it is stuff that I see all the time, but if you're not someone who is at the game or actively involved, it would be very, you know, it, it would be very informative for people who are not there? Well, first of all, thank you for the kind words. Um, but I will say this, uh, you know, my background um, is I'm, I'm an analyst and, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a play by play guy. I have a, one of the best in the business. Dave Johnson is my, my partner and he does an amazing, amazing job. Right. And I learned uh, to be an analyst on TV. I was doing college games, you know, 50 mm -hmm. college games a year, not doing, mm -hmm not doing the NBA. And, um, when you're an analyst on television, it's very different than being an analyst on the radio. Mm -hmm. And I, I've had to make that adjustment because when you're an analyst on TV, the picture tells the story and you can talk through it, but on radio, it's harder. You got to be more concise. Yes. Um, and you, because there is no picture cause you're in your car listening or someone's listening on a, on a phone. And, you know, the, fundamentally, a play-by-play -play guy says what's happening, and yes. a color guy says why is hap why it's happening. And I'm the color guy, so on radio, it's almost like a what why. You still have to explain it, but you also got to you know give them the why, or else you know they they don't understand what you know. Well, how did Bradley Beal get so open on a jump shot? Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But you do kind of get in their stuff too. And for someone that kind of travels with the team, you do check them, though. You check I do. These guys. I do. And you do. <laughs> you 
you know, I, I have really good, um, resources. You know, I, I, on the road, I go running with Scott Brooks all the time. So we, when we run, we, Oh, you run um, with Scott Brooks. Really? <laughs> yep. Yeah. We, we're, we're good friends and we go running on the road a lot. And a lot of the assistant coaches are my friends. So, you know, I pick their brains to <clears throat> not, not to dis- disclose what's going to happen, but more so for me to take that information and build the story of what I think could happen. And then I try to communicate that to people that are listening. That are listening. I see. Yeah, no, I mean, it it is, it's very informative and I can tell you that, gosh, when did I, I started writing for the wizards back like about five, six years ago, I was there with Randy Whitman. That's when I first started and I right. was beginning, and I would be like, oh, I have to listen to people. So you were one of the people I listened to. I mean, there were several people that I listened to just to get a better understanding because my background was really broadcasting. I came from news, entertainment. I worked for WPGC, places like that. So I was really expanding my repertoire to include sports, even though I've been in sports all my life. But... I just, you know, so there were certain people that I listened to, and you were definitely one of them that I listened to. You're right. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, I, 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 when I talk about this stuff to people, I, you know, I, I don't even consider myself a broadcaster. I, I'm, I'm a basketball guy, right. you know, and that's the stuff I love. Like, I love to, you know, go to practices. Last year, not this past season, the year before, I was even helping out in practices and oh, involved wow. in the drills and doing stuff like that because right. um, I just love I love the game and I love the um, complexities of the game and, and the schemes of the game and all that stuff. So I, I really don't even consider myself, you know, a broadcaster. I'm more of a basketball guy just kind of explaining and communicating what I know. That, that's really how I view myself. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, hey, that that's that probably answers a lot of questions as to why you are thorough with your explanations and people can really follow and get a better understanding, especially when you don't know all the basketball terms. And that's the thing that I try to be sensitive about because I think that a lot of men sometimes just assume, okay, well, just men or, or women who are involved in basketball are listening, but there are some people that really don't know all the lingo and really want to get, and that's how, they, that's how we build interest in our sport in sports is to open our lingo, our lingo and explain things, and then that's how we generate interest of, of different people, especially like even my friends that are not involved in sports. So it's always kind of refreshing, you know, and I always speak for that person because I'm kind of sensitive to that because I had to learn a whole new lingo. So <laughs> Right, right. And, you know, and, and I, what I try to do sometimes, and I'll catch myself, is if I if I'm talking about a pick and roll, well, I'll explain what that is. Or yes. if I'll talk about a drag or a zipper cut, I'll I'll catch myself and go, well, a drag is like a pick and roll on a fast break, you know, right. and which is what I just saw. So people that are listening, you know, will understand what really what that is. Yes, yes, and it's true. It's true. We do, and I did. I'm one of them. I'm totally guilty of having to start from class 101 with you. So (laughs) Um, anyway, we're going to take a little break and then um, in about maybe like a 30 second break, and then we're going to come back and talk about the Wizards this year. Okay, Glenn? Hang tight, okay? You got it. We'll be right back. You got it. Chill out and listen, listen, listen. You got things on your mind that worry you? Keep you awake? No, I just don't sleep much. You don't sleep? I don't sleep. I don't sleep much. I don't sleep. Bad rhythm for rap is baptism, and it might save souls if masses half listen. Chronics on the track, the brass is in the pocket with the jazz and the hip hop mash. You can't knock it. 
can't stop it if you try to If it dies, don't sleep, revive it so it thrives through And as long as we alive too This is Michelin star in the kitchen, no drive through Death low chef in it, A1 prepping it Tiff's got a bottle on deck, most definite Niggas can't question it, it's always raw Like the sun gon' shine, we just always are Like y'all can't see what we always saw We was never up close, we was always far Now we almost here, neither here nor there And niggas fear no man, nor fear no fear I got no fuck left to give, one dream Gun too big, can't tuck in my jeans Everyday hustle, never touching a thing And you wonder how I'm balancing weight with one beam <laughs> It's a mouse click Southwitz Don't ever doubt this They ain't about shit Alright, yes, welcome back to the Hustle It's your girl Alina 7 right here at WLVS Radio We have on uh, our show today Glenn Contour, Emmy Award winning analyst he is a color commentator for the Washington Wizards, and um, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with in the sports broadcast arena, DC Sports, Washington Wizards, uh, and also if you've ever listened to the radio broadcast, you listening to him even though you may not know that. Um, most people do know him though, so I'm so happy uh, that he's on my show, and we're gonna continue talking with him regarding the Washington Wizards. So, Glenn, are you there? I am there. here, and okay. I'm, I'm going to hire you as my PR person <laughs> with all those accolades. <laughs> Thank you. That's complimentary, I must say. But <laughs> anyway, um, so, Glenn, let's just kind of wrap up the Washington Wizards season really quick because – I know it started out so bright. I was even one of the people who were so excited. What? We got Dwight Howard. We got Austin Rivers. I mean, this is going to be incredible uh, of a season. Um, and it just seemed like it went from Dwight Howard. It just kind of spiraled, and it never seemed like we got off the ground at all. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, it was very disappointing. Um, you know, there were, there were high expectations coming from, you know, I guess the fan base and the owners and Ted Leonsis and, you know, and the general manager, Ernie Grunfeld and, you know, and everybody else in the front office, you know, and if you think about it, you know, the season started out with, you know, Austin Rivers and Kelly Oubre and the starting five was Dwight Howard, Markeith Morris, Otto Porter, Bradley Beal and John. Well, you know, come... January, Bradley Beal was the only one there in the starting five. In the starting so, five. you know, it, yes. it, it all it all changed. We lost Oubre. We lost um, uh, uh, Austin Rivers. And Keith got traded. And uh, John got hurt. And Dwight never, you know, never really played. He played, what, eight games, nine games. Um, and that was it. And the whole thing spiraled downward. That being said, you know, the guys that, you know, did play, you know, we found some gems like Thomas Bryant and Thomas Sadoransky had real good years where they probably would not have. Um, so there was some positives uh, out of it. But um, look, the bottom line is you are what your record is. And, you know, we, we had, instead of getting 50 wins, we got 50 losses. So it was a, it was a disappointing year, that, to, to say the least. Right, right. Now, did you agree with the Kelly Oubre trade? Well, we were going to lose Kelly Oubre at the end of the season. So, you know, I think they made the right move. We couldn't have afforded him based on John's contract and Brad's contract okay. with what he was going to make. So, you know, did we, did they want to trade Oubre? No, he was an, he's an excellent young, very young player. Right. Uh, I, and I love him personally. It really hurt. Yes. Me, me to uh, see him go. He's he's a, he's a good friend. He's I, I have, I've done a lot of things with him, um, and and I hated to lose him, but they had to trade him. They had to get something for him at that time, and that's kind of what they did. So, you know, did they want to lose him? No, but they did end up getting Trevor Reza from it. Right, right. Yes, that's true. And so, let me ask you this question though. At that time, though, that they had traded Kelly Oubre, I believe Austin Rivers was part of that, though, right? Right. Of that trade, right. There was no way 
to, I guess at that time, John Wall was not really injured at that time. Because well, I'm just trying he, to think. he was, though. He, he was injured really from the beginning, you know, and okay. he wasn't himself all year. You know, while during you're right during that time, but he wasn't himself. I mean, he did have that great game against L.A. when he had 40 points. Oh yes, and he played he played amazing. But you know, he wasn't himself, and you know, th- th- I think you know that maybe was part of it. You know, he wasn't in great shape um, when he came in because of his foot injuries, and you know, he he's been hurt a lot. So, you know, we got to want you got to hope that he just gets healthy. That's at the end of the day, that's what you got to hope with John Wall cuz you know how good he is. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Now, did you what do you think about the Auto Porter uh Max deal? I just want your perspective. I know you uh, Auto is such a nice guy and I hate when people talk bad about him, but from a business perspective, he does have some challenges and a nagging hip issue and things like that. And that was even prevalent to me prior to the whole max contract, you know, uh, right. when that, right. thing, you know, when they were discussing it, that, that summer, that was going right. on I mean, then. here's, here's the bottom line. And it's not just an, it wasn't just an auto Porter issue. It's it, like so many teams in the NBA have this issue. The summer of 2016 was when, you know, Durant left and went to Golden State. Right. You know, all these guys were getting overpaid. You know, was Otto Porter a max contract guy ever? You know, you could say probably not, but the market, it's like real estate. You know, the real estate market goes up. You know, your house is worth X amount of money. If it goes down, it's worth X amount of money. Right. You know, that's just how it is. So the Wizards didn't want to lose him. So Brooklyn made an offer Mm -hmm. because he was a restricted, what's called a restricted free agent. So Brooklyn made him an offer, which was a a max contract, and the Wizards matched it. So we kept him. Mm -hmm. Now, was he worth that money? Nobody is, really. You know, I mean, you know, and that's the problem. The problem is that so many guys were signing these contracts that, you know, Mahimi was one. Yes. You know, another one yes. that, you know, we at, at the time we had to sign somebody. So we signed Mahimi. But it's not just the Wizards. There's so many guys like I, when I go around to, and talk to different analysts and different front office people, you know, they'll say, well, you know, um, we got we got our own guys that were overpaid. Mm-hmm. And it, so it's all over the place. You know, Chandler Parsons and all these guys are, are get, we're getting. Evan Turner are getting Tyler Johnson. They got all these guys got paid crazy money because that's what the market was dictating at the time. And, you know, so you could, you know, you and I could sit here and I could talk to fans calling in all we want, you know, all they want. But the bottom line is, you know, you, you got to get what you're worth, Mm -hmm. you know, at that time. And that's kind of what happened with Otto. And, you know, Otto had a hip injury. Is he worth a max contract? Probably not. But he's a real good player, and he's young. He's very young, too. Yes, we hated to see Otto go, but, mm-hmm. you know, for us to maybe get some financial flexibility, we had to make that move. Right, right. But I think the Jan Mahimi contract was just so much more of a diff. I mean, I, I still kind of rack my brains. Of, I, I, I still can't bring process that one only because – of what his issues were at his prior team. So for me, I'm just like, that one to me is a little bit different than the auto one. Yeah, I mean, I it, mean- it is, but, you know, Yamahimi, when he was with the Pacers, was one of the best defensive pick and roll players in the NBA, right? So at the time. Right. And, you know, that's what the Wizards thought they were getting, you know, and he but had some injuries that he was dealing with. When- yeah. You know, he had some injuries, so also that he was fighting through. So was he worth that money? Obviously not. But at the time, and again, it's it's that summer of 2016. At the time, at the time. these got so many guys got overpaid, and he, you know, you can make a case that he was one of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this question: How difficult was it around the Washington Wizards and Monumental Sports? You could say that when. 
Ernie Grunfeld was had to be released. How difficult was that around? Like, what was the energy like? Well, you know, I mean, Ernie, er, Ernie was so highly criticized. Um, but if you go on Twitter and all this stuff, Everywhere. and you know, and some of it, some of it was fair, and some of it was totally unfair. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, you know, Ernie had a change gears so many times during his career as a general manager because he had two owners, mm. you know, one owner wanted to go in one different direction and then, yes. you know, and then Mr. Poland passed away and then yes. Ted got, got ownership of the team and wanted to go in a different direction. And Ernie was able to financially, you know, do what Ted wanted done. And so he got it done. Now, a lot of it was, you know, some of it was good and some of it wasn't good, mm-hmm. but you know, you look at NBA teams around the NBA and you look at them and you go, well, everybody's got those the issues. You know, Ernie was around a long time, 16 years is he was one of the most, you know, tenured general managers. And sometimes change is needed, you know, from even from Ernie's standpoint, right. um, Ernie's one of the only... nicest people you, you'll ever meet. Right. Yeah. But there are only like, I think four other coaches in the NBA that have lasted that long and all four of them have championships. So, you know, championships behind their name. So, you know, that it must have been a very, a strong bond there. Yeah. I mean, look, it it, it was, you know, and, and, but, you know, look, sometimes you need to make change. Um, Look what Toronto did. Toronto, you know, had, uh-huh. What Dwayne Casey had won had won fifty nine games and he got fired. And, he got fired, and then right. the, and then Masai, who was their general manager, said, "You know what? The, we just keep getting bumped in the first round. You know, I love De, uh, DeRozan, but we got to make a change. Right. So they made that they pulled the trigger with the Kawhi Leonard trade. You know, and you know, look, they they had great chemistry on that team with with DeRozan and Kyle Lowry and um, and all those guys. But they shook it up. Yes. and you know, sometimes when you when you do that, um, you know, you're you, you got to do it long term. They gambled. You know, now Toronto's in the playoffs, but can they keep Kawhi Leonard? I don't know. I don't think so. You know, if yeah. they win a championship, they I would say yes, they can keep him. But if they don't, you know, Kawhi's going to look to go to a team that all these guys at this point in their career, Elena, they want to win. They want to. They want the chip. Win. They want to win. Yeah, they want to win titles, and they also have a lot more power with free agency. So they're not just going – and they're going to exercise their options, their player options. This is not the NBA of the long time ago. This is the new NBA. I mean, you Yeah, know, they collaborate players, amongst themselves, and yes. they figure some – you know, they, they, they try to figure it out. But, you know, so – uh, you know, as you know, they talk. Yeah, they talk. But pertaining to Ernie, you know, I mean – Ted had to make a move and he wanted to make a move and he wanted a little bit of a change in the shake up the culture a little bit and maybe get, you know, a different, you know, viewpoint of personnel. Um, and so he made the move. He, you know, he, he made that move. Right. And I don't see any more quick fixes now. I think he's even taken his time in hiring a new GM. I mean, I know that there's, yes. a, there's an interim one, but I'm just saying, it, he seems like he's taking the time now to really give this, uh, or maybe he's second guessing himself and putting other people in place to really kind of do some investigative work in terms of who would be a good match for the team. Do you get that sense of why there's no real? Yeah, chance? I do. I, I think you know. I th- look if if you and I are owners, mm-hmm. you know, right, and we want to make a change, you know, we're gonna interview people. And they're gonna, and we're gonna say, when you come in, tell me what you would do with this team. Right. You know, would you trade John Wall? Would you trade Bradley Beal? Would you, you know, start over and do like what Philly did with the process, and you know, just start, you know, piling up draft picks over, you know, a couple of years? Um, would you, you know, what do you do? You know, what do you do with John and Brad? What do you do with um, Dwight Howard now? You know, I mean, like that's what I would do. I would. And I think you would too. You would yes. come in and say, "Tell me what's your game plan," you know. And he'll probably interview as many people as he wants, but they're all going to come in with different. And I emphasize that word, different game plans. What mm-hmm. they would do with the Wizards, based on, you know, what's locked up financially, mm-hmm. um, who's coming back, who's 
restricted free agents, who's unrestricted free agents. And, you know, you, you, you take a look at that and you go, all right, you know, I think I like this plan best because Ted wants to win. And, you know, he won with the caps. He gets it. You know, he's passionate about it, which is what I love about Ted. He is, he's passionate and he's a basketball guy. Ted knows more about basketball than he does about hockey. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a New York guy. He's a basketball guy. So he gets it. So (laughs) yeah. So he's going to, you know, he's going to, um, he's going to do the right things. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, great. Well, Glenn, it was so good to speak to you regarding uh, the Washington Wizards. I'm sure next year I see that Dwight Howard has exercised his player option, so we will be seeing him, right? We will, unless, you know, the Wizards could also cut him. You know, so we'll also, see. You know, okay. look, yeah, there's gonna look be the some bottom changes, line. There's going to be changes, though. A lot of changes. Yeah, there'll be, there'll be, look, the bottom line is productivity. You know, who's going to contribute? You know, if, if the, look, Dwight, Dwight Howard is an amazing player. He's a force, but he's got to be physically ready to be that force. And, you know, if he is, hell yeah, he can, he could, you know, he could help us. Mm-hmm. You know, we thought he was going to help us this year. Yeah. That guy can get double fig, double, re, double figure scoring and double figure rebounds in his sleep. You know, and he's a good defensive player. But if he's not physically able to do it, then, you know, you got to make decisions. So, you, look, if, if you're the Wizards right now, you got to hope that he's getting there. He's getting to that point. And you got to hope that John is healing and will come back, you know, from this Achilles, whenever that may be, you know, mm-hmm. you know, close to being the old John Wall. Right. I'm hoping. I'm hoping he does. That's a significant injury, you know. To uh, it, it is, it, it is. is. But guys come back from it, so you, know, yeah. you got to keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, I definitely, definitely will for John Wall. Yeah, I think so. I think he'll be, he'll come back. And you know, John Wall's attitude is like, you know what? I'm gonna come back better than ever. So, <laughs> yeah, that perseverance alone, you know, may take him a lot further than what people give him credit for. So. You know, we'll see. But, um, okay, who do you have taking it in the East? In the East? Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. I mean, it, it really is tough. I mean, Milwaukee looks really good, and Toronto. Uh, Toronto, Toronto looks good, and Boston looks good right now. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's really hard to figure out who, who's going to win, you know, who's going to win the East this year. Yeah. Um, Toronto's deep, Milwaukee's deep and they got yeah. Giannis and, you know, he, he's like the X factor. I mean, he, he's so dominant, you know, and that's what happens in the playoffs. I mean, you, you rely on your, your superstars, you rely on those guys yes. and, you know, he's, he's one of them. And I think in the West, you know, I think everybody's kind of forgetting about Houston. You know, I think Houston could beat Golden State, but, but, you know, Golden State's starting to play better now without Boogie Cousins, without, which is amazing. Know. You know, I mean, they, they, they're, you know, so it, it's hard to figure out what they're going to do yeah, even. Yeah. But they, they're, still, they're still incredibly talented and probably have – Golden State still probably has the most talent. Um, it's like playoff talent, I'll call it, than, than anybody. But Houston's right there. And I, Houston, to me, could win the whole thing. Yeah, I think that Houston has sharpened up their team, though. I don't know what's happened to them in the last few weeks, but they have really improved, you know. I mean, even though yep. last night they lost, but I still feel like they are a force to be reckoned with for Golden State. Um, I don't know why. I think it's because they lost to Golden State last year, so it's almost like a vengeance for them, you know. Uh, so Hey, we'll I got see. a question for you. I got a question for you. <laughs> yes. You ready? Yes, I, I'm. I'm all ears. <laughs> tell tell me about your 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 kids that they're they're tennis players. Yes, my kids are. Uh, my daughter and my son play tennis. Um, my son did not want to play on the tour like my daughter did, so he said, "Ma, I'm ready to go to a regular high school." They were actually touring when they were uh, younger, um, and so he went to Bishop McNamara and played tennis for them and. He was like, I don't want to play on that level anymore. I just want to go to a regular high school and have a regular life. I'm not going to And be play a regular guy, tour. yeah. Yeah, he just wanted the high school experience. So I said, okay, fine. And my daughter continued with it. And my daughter has played in the City Open for two years now. So proud of her. She started playing the City Open in doubles. Um, she got wild cards each year. 
uh, from this uh, Mark Ein and them. Uh, and she got as high as about maybe seven, eight hundred on the WTA. And that's amazing. I, well, you got to be a proud mama then. I am. I am. And she got to like five hundred and we pulled her, you know, on du in doubles. We pulled her and was like, hey, you're not number one. So you got to go to college. But she was she was OK. She was like, hey, Ma, I want to go be a wolf pack anyway. So she headed on down to NC State and she's gotten five player of the weeks. And she just got nominated for Rookie of the Year last night. So I'm like, I was all excited for her. Um, the basketball star, uh, what was her name, Elise or something like that. She got, um, she won Rookie of the Year last night. And there was a swimmer as well that was in competition with my daughter. Um, That's but amazing. None of them got That's amazing. Player of the Week. So I was like, well, Alana, you know, <laughs> you should feel really proud of that. But. You know, yeah, no kidding. That's great stuff. That's it's great, great stuff. I mean, it, it's just good. She's really becoming, you know, in her own right. She's really doing well. So I'm excited for her. I knew she was probably going to do well, but, you know, we'll see how far that's, she goes. <laughs> She'll be back on the awesome. pro scene. I'll let everybody know when she when she's going to be playing at the City Open. You got to come out and see her. She's a joy to watch. I'm telling you. Yeah, I, I wanted. I, I, I love that stuff. So yeah. I love I love to watch tennis. So I definitely will. Yes, great. Well, we we will definitely invite you when she's uh, going going to be debuting at the City Open. Hopefully this year. I will be there. <laughs> okay, Glenn. Well, thank you so much, Glenn, and I'll see you around. You're going to be at some of the Mystics games this summer, or I what? will. Yes, will. yes, I, yes. I will. I will. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Glenn, for doing my show. I truly appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you at the Mystics. The Thanks summer. for having me. Thanks uh, for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you, Glenn Consor. Yes, so excited to have him on my show. He is wonderful. Uh, he's so informative. He knows everything about the Washington Wizards. Trust me, he's been, you know, in D.C. sports covering wizards whatever you know for a long time 20 plus years so he knows a lot he knows his stuff when it comes to the washington wizards so it's great just to kind of pick his brain next time we're going to get him even longer so but one other person i do want to talk to is boogie cousins right hand man because i promised him that i was going to call him so we have to call him because he is going to just kind of give us an update as to where Boogie is with his injury before I get on out of here. I just want to talk to Coach Keith Williams. Hopefully he picks up the phone. <laughs> he told me he was going to give me an opportunity just to talk about Boogie Hello? Cousins. Keith, Coach. Hey, how you doing? How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. How's it going? I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm in the gym right now. What's I, going on? I know you are. We're just going to pick your brain for, for a minute, though. Tell us about the latest on Boogie Cousins and what's going on and what we could look forward to. Luckily, it was not a tendon tear. So from what I understand, it's just a quad muscle tear. Correct. So obviously, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a high and a low that day because his premiere of his uh, documentary came out. But, yeah, he's technically scheduled to probably be back. He will be back by the finals now. I'm not sure if, he, if they will allow him to play. You know what I mean? But oh, he'll be he'll back be by to, the finals. Yeah, but well, oh. I doubt they let him play in the game. But he'll be able to. He'll be able to show that he's he's back healthy. Oh, so that, Right now, that's 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 where he's at. Yep. Yeah? That's where he's at. Oh, that's great yeah. news. Hello, back by the finals. Well, I would love to just see him, if even if he's standing over there, because when I saw that, I just my heart just melted when I saw him you know, just kind of fall down, grab his leg. And I was like, oh, no, please let him be okay. Um, you know, I, it's a joy to see him play. And someone who's like a stretch five like him is just wonderful to watch. How are no, how no. Is his spirits, though, right now, Keith? I mean, obviously he was down for sure. But uh, I think, you know, as you get older and he's gone through injuries now, I think he realizes, hey, maybe this is my lot of life. Maybe it's something to be for me to learn in this situation. So right. uh, while he's down, I think he's he's he's, he's his spirits are lifted now, and he, he back in there, you know, working hard. Like you said, it's not as bad as initially thought. Uh, 
I guess yeah. the only problem would be it's on the same leg as the Achilles. So sometimes, you know, that's, that could be an issue in terms of when you negotiate for a contract. I think that's the biggest thing, the timing, the timing of the injury more so than, the, you know, how severe the injury is. Right, right. So, you know, maybe he he just needs uh, to not play in the finals. <laughs> no, take, definitely not. And, yeah. and, and chemistry-wise, chemistry-wise, conditioning-wise, he won't, he won't be ready. Yeah. But I'm sure hey, if it came down to it, if they needed a bucket, I'm sure they would throw him in there. Right, right, exactly. But maybe just have him, you know, work on that leg, that left leg. You know what I'm saying? And uh, kind of build that up and strengthen it. Maybe, you know, sometimes, and this is, I'm putting my trainer hat on, but sometimes when we sit out from one injury, something else weakens our, you know, our limb in some capacity. And then we put all this stress and strain on it. And it's really kind of, you know, we really should be, and I know they were trying to limit his minutes anyway, but we really kind of have to take it easy. So he should just know that he should take it easy, too. I know he's a big, strong guy, and it's hard to do that with big, strong guys like him. No, nah, no question. I mean, he's a big guy. He's never going to be the skinny guy. So, yeah. so he's, he's, all, he's always going to be in that situation. And as, as you get older, as you get older and you, and you pick up weight, you know, it's tough. It's tough. But uh, right. the one beauty for him is he's very light on his feet. So. He is. He is light on his feet, and he can shoot that three. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, well, well, listen, guy. I mean, it's it's great to talk to you. We didn't have that long, but when you come back, by the way, Coach Keith Will Keith Williams, along with some of our his friends, his NBA friends, are going to be doing my show in a few weeks. The first Tuesday in May, we're going to have a big NBA basketball coach group right here in the studio talking the playoffs when it is right between the second and the third rounds right you got to come back and do my forum right i'm there i'm here looking forward the to it it should, be heat. it should be very heated yes it's going to be heated but it's going to be a lot of fun and i can't wait to have you along with everybody else in the studio so i gotta get off the air because we the shit is coming up and i do not want to take up any of their time <laughs> So, Keith, I want to welcome, thank you so much to my show uh, for doing it. Thank the you last for having minute. me on we your know, show. We know you're a Boogie's confidant, advisor, all of that. So we wish him the best. Tell him he has a friend here in the show. We love Boogie, and we want to see him get better. And we'll see you in a few weeks, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you. Have all fun. Right. <laughs> all right. right. Hey, guys, right. it's me. It's me. Yes. Don't forget, next week we got some boxers coming up. Yes, we got a boxing show. And then also the head coach for the Washington Capital City Go-Go is going to be right here in the studio. So don't go anywhere. We the shit's coming up. Look for me every Tuesday, 6 p.m. right here at Listen Vision Live. It's your girl, Lena 7. I'll see you guys next week, 6 p.m. I'm out. Later. Bye.